Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Let's take a tour of the garden on this wet day and see what's growing. Cucumbers. We had a separate video about getting these things up on a trellis, training them there. Phoebe's expecting me to throw her frisbee. Potted tomatoes are going crazy now. We've had some rain lately and they've really taken off here. I've actually got some fruit down in here somewhere. <clears throat> some of these are starting to fruit, mainly the romas. Although with this cold snap we've had, I don't expect these flowers to make it. I think some of these, there's, there's some fruits there. But uh, expect most of these flowers, if they haven't been pollinated, they'll probably fall off. This is some of the nicest basil I've ever had. Look at these big, giant leaves. I mean, that's better than store-bought right there. And uh, good pinching and pruning has caused us to branch out quite a bit. And we just need to watch for, watch for bolting. I just love the smell of this. This is a, this is a big batch of pesto right here waiting to happen. <laughs> Look at those beet greens. If you want to eat beet greens, now's the time to do it. That's some big ones right there. <clears throat> Be a while before they start to bulb out. Got the onions doing well. I mulched everything in here, so I'm not having to deal with weeds so much anymore. And ground tomatoes are doing really well here. You can see you got, I got uh, flowers and I got blossoms on almost all the varieties that are in my bed here. This happens to be actually a hybrid variety, my only hybrid. I generally don't grow hybrids, but I wanted to see how they performed uh, compared to the heirlooms. And pretty much it, they're keeping pace. The heirlooms down at that end seem to be in, in healthier soil. And these, uh, these are just a, a little bit shorter, but they're all, they're all keeping pace. They're all on the same track. And there's some very baby blueberries coming in here. There were a whole lot more blossoms on here. See, I just knocked one off. And I'm not sure about blueberries. I don't know why they would drop off like that, but they did. So we'll get a few blueberries here, maybe here and there. But uh, for the most part, I'm not looking to a giant blueberry harvest this year. You can see these are nice and bushy pepper bushes, just what I wanted. We had a separate video about pruning pepper plants but you can see that they're not tall and lanky spindly things they're nice and leafy bushes with lots of branches lots of branching uh, fruiting branches and that's what we wanted i've had these things before where they grow tall and straight and slender and they give you a little bit of fruit here and there but on this this jalapeno pepper alone i see well, i mean like a dozen already just a dozen peppers coming in maybe even more because we pruned it and we've got so many branches here that are that are fruiting branches so that's really encouraging to me another example of a ton of fruit coming in on this jalapeno bush i'm gonna be into some salsa this year with my tomatoes and jalapenos that's awesome so prune your pepper plants that's the lesson here's my little ginger operation little container spin uh ginger these two bushy ones were the the tissue culture that I got from Baker Creek but these are the ginger from my local Asian market that has been growing like crazy and I put them out here and since I've put them out in this in the ground they've really leafed out and branched up and it looks like they're gonna do fine I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some good ginger out of this stuff the pruned grapevines they're doing really nice they've all come up and are starting to grow and branch out doing just what you want them to do. So I've blown through half of this year's oak leaf shed. I've used it as mulch, about half and half with grass clippings. I've mowed the yard twice, which is, uh, you know, I, I get free, basically free mulch and free compost. The yard I view as a, as a harvest rather than cutting the grass. And I've still got a good amount of it left over. This is good stuff. If, it, if what I don't use as mulch, I'm gonna use as, um, as compost. Well, I've been able to harvest a few radishes from my, uh, my stressed out radish bed. And that cat that came raiding this bed has done some damage. And, uh, well, I've got some 
some new seed planted and I'll have radishes for some time now thanks to the cat so I'm gonna choose to see that as a blessing but uh, I've got a, a nice bunch of radishes in the fridge waiting to be roasted up now so that's been a pretty good deal here's how I chose to protect my radishes from the neighbor's cat the cat as you can see on video decided to make his uh, make this his personal toilet and he destroyed that entire about half of that entire radish bed especially when the seedlings were new and they were in a nice lush seed bed he came and just decided to dig them all up I had to cage it in to keep him out and so he's been digging right there lately um, I'm gonna have to trap him if he keeps coming in the garden destroying my property but um, putting this cage over it at least allowed me to get those radishes up got me some radishes I, I did put a broccoli in the place of some of the ones he destroyed but uh, yeah, you do what you can with the pests you got, right? Glad you could join me here on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Thanks for touring my garden with me on this cool Monday evening. Y'all have a good week. Bye-bye.